click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject digital image processing this is the 12th video from second chapter digital image fundamentals in this chapter i am introducing you people to various fundamental details to exactly start with the fundamental steps into the digital image processing subject that are the subsequent chapters of this particular subject i am going to take so digital image fundamentals we exactly started with understanding of human visual system we termed it with the title elements of human visual perception where we have seen the structure of human eye how the image is formed there the brightness adaptation and discrimination with respect to the human eye we have learned so after learning this reference model whatever the digital image processing into this particular digital media we have so that we have started with what exactly the artificial image formation model is we have seen how exactly the image is sensed by the image sensors we call it image acquisition and whatever we have obtained it into the continuous form we need to get represented into the digital one hence the importance of sampling and quantization is also addressed in the previous video we have seen various basic relationships between the pixels into the image sample we know that pixels are the basic entities into the image sample image sample is the two dimensional information signal so the pixel relationships like the adjacency between the pixels the connectivity the regions boundaries and the distance matrix we have seen into the previous video now it's time to introduce you people to various mathematical tools that we can work with we can manipulate with to get various kinds of results with respect to various applications of digital image processing that we are going to see into the entire subject so in this particular video the various tools we shall see and the effect with which the images will be affected that we are going to address so let us begin with this topic so this is our mathematical tools for digital image processing from the subject digital image processing and chapter digital image fundamentals a prototype of digital image processing so we proceed further so in this section we are going to address the two principal objectives the first objective is to introduce to various mathematical tools used throughout the digital image processing that we have talked about and the second one is to see how these tools are used by applying them to variety of basic image processing tasks so with these two objectives we start with mathematical tools and we also discuss the various scope of these tools and their applications that are necessary into the fundamental steps of the subject digital image processing so fundamental steps we have already been familiar right from the first chapter that is uh, the image enhancement image restoration morphological techniques the bevelets object recognition all fundamental steps we have discussed earlier so let us begin with the first mathematical tool that is array versus matrix operation so here images we know that these can be viewed as array of pixels array means group so pixel is the basic entity into the image as the human body is having basic entity to be a cell of the body that forms tissues uh, after having the group of cells then tissues together form the organs and organs together forms the body so likewise the basic entity we have pixel so group of pixel we can say that is nothing but the image so group we refer with the name array of pixels here so an array operation involves one or more images and it is carried out by pixel by pixel wise so if you have two input images and we want to have some operation to result into the composite image so pixel by pixel operation within the input images will be done so that is called as array operation into the image processing next images can also be viewed equivalently as matrices we know that into the linear algebra matrices are the tools where several number of equations of same kind the coefficients we can represent into the two square brackets that we call as matrix 
so if we are representing digital image by f of x y where x and y are the spatial coordinates the two dimensions of the image signal and f represents the intensity so intensity value for digital image is digital one uh, we extend it right from 0 to 255 if you are talking about the 8 bit image so these intensity values for the image sample we can also represent with the help of matrix so the representation can be with the help of array or can be mathematically with the terms of matrix also so talking more there are many situations in which the operations between the images are carried out using matrix theory also not going exactly by pixel by pixel we uh, can also go with the matrix theory so here thus a clear distinction must be made between the array and matrix operation so we move further for example we take the 2 by 2 images so here a11 a12 a21 a22 forms the first image of 2 by 2 size so here we have two columns and two rows here so a11 is the first pixel into the first row first column into the first row second column we have a suffix 1 2 so similarly these four coefficients actually represent the four pixels of 2 by 2 image here the second image is represented by b11 b12 b21 and b22 so if these are the two input images represented into the matrix form so the array product if you take so the array product will be giving you the resultant like this so these two are uh, product means multiplication is there in here so a11 multiplied directly with b11 so the first element into the first row first col uh, column will be multiplied to the first row and first column element into the second image so the product will be a11 b11 this will be a1 to b12 a21 b21 and a22 b22 so this is simple pixel to pixel relationship giving us this particular resultant so this is called as array product on the another hand if you are going to take the matrix product so that time the outcome will be somewhat different so it will be opting this particular formula so here a11 the first element will be multiplied by with b11 the first element into the second image and it will be added with a12 product with b21 so the first row first column we are going to take into consideration to find the value of this particular element so here we are having the first row and second column so a11 is multiplied by with a uh, b12 and the summation is done with a12 multiplied with b22 so first row second column so this way the resultants by the array product and the matrix product are different so this is the distinction between the matrix operation and that of the array operation so we actually assume the array operation throughout this subject digital and uh, digital image processing unless it is stated so for example if you are taking the first example raising an image to a power so it means that each and every pixel into the image sample is raised to that particular power so pixel to pixel relationship the image sample for example multiplied by 2 so the all the intensity values into the image sample will be doubled so second example dividing an image by another so it means that the division is between the corresponding pixel pairs and so on so if i am taking the fourth row and fifth column of first image so it shall be divided by the fourth row and fifth column only from the second image no another pixel will be having any kind of operation with that particular pixel of image one so this is understanding of array versus matrix operation this was the first tool to learn into digital image processing mathematical perspective so the second tool that is with the title linear versus non-linear operations so we know the basic definitions of what exactly the linearity mean what exactly the non-linearity is so this is one of the most important classification of image processing method we have to guess whether it is of linear type or non-linear type to look at its particular operation 
so if you are going to consider a certain operator so here we are representing operator by capital h that produces output image so output image is represented by g of xy g represents the output intensity xy represents the coordinates and the input image provided to this particular operator to have resultant g of xy is f of xy that is the general representation we have seen for the digital image so in this case the transform operator we can say so that we can relationship write down like h in the bracket the input image f of xy will provide you the result g of xy on to the right hand side now if h is said to be a linear operator it should satisfy certain condition so for that condition we have the formulation h in the bracket ai multiplied by fi of xy plus aj multiplied by fj of xy should be equal to ai in multiplication with h operator for fi xy plus aj in multiplication with h operation for fi sorry fj xy so that is nothing but ai in multiplication with the gi of xy plus aj in multiplication with gj of xy so whatever the individual individual operation that we are going to see on to the right hand side that should be reflected if you take the complete operation for the composite input cm so here the ai aj later on fi of xy and fj of xy are actually the arbitrary constant and the images so these are the two images fi of xy and fj of xy and ai and aj are the arbitrary constant the images are of the same size so that is the very requirement to work with the matrix uh, the mathematical operations into the digital image processing here so the previous equation actually indicates the output of linear operation due to some of the two inputs is same as performing the individual operations of the input and then after that particular operation the summation if it is carried out so in addition we have the output of linear operation to a constant types of input is same as the output of operation due to the original input multiplied by that by that particular constant so this was the condition for linearity into the image processing operations so the first property here that have been referred here is called as property of additivity and the second is called as property of homogeneity so next we see here for the linear versus and non linear operation so another example we take here instead of simply the operator h we take the actual operator the operator of summation so here we represent it with the help of sigma so formulation if you do so that time for the left hand side we first of all have the addition of the inputs so addition of the two terms here we have ai multiplied by the image sample that is fi of xy and summation with aj multiplied with fj of xy so this particular two terms have been summed here into the left hand side so to the right hand side we have the summation operator to individual terms then we have the constants ai and aj outside the operation uh, sigma finally we have ai in multiplication with gi of xy plus aj in multiplication with gj of xy so here we have the conclusion that the summation operator is linear operator either you have the summation of the two inputs and then carry out summation or you apply summation to the individual inputs and then sum it so it will be the same kind of operation so we can say that in this particular operation the linearity is observed now next we have another operation that is max operation so the max operation has a function to find the maximum value of the pixels into the image so for example we have the image samples f1 and f2 so f1 is represented 0 2 2 3 so first row second row so that we have represented similarly f2 is also having the same dimensions 2 by 2 two rows and two columns so it is 6 pi and 4 7 so for these two image samples if you are going to operate with the max operation so here we are having the max operation on to the left hand side by multiplying the first image sample 
by the arbitrary constant 1 and the multiplication of the second image sample by arbitrary constant minus 1. So, these are to first of all summed here then max operation is uh, applied there. So, on to the RHS we have max of minus 6, minus 3, minus 2, minus 4 that we obtain minus 2. All the signs uh, are of negation that is why the maximum value is minus 2. Now, in another case, if you have first of all the max of the first image sample multiplied with the arbitrary constant 1, maximum from the second image sample multiplied with the arbitrary constant minus 1 we have taken for second image sample. So, that time we obtained 3 plus minus 1 times 7 that results into minus 4. So, here the two operations, the, the two cases result into the different answers. So, here we had minus 2, now we are having minus 4. So, that is why the conclusion can be made here that the max operator is not showing linearity. Hence, we can say that max operator is non-linear operator. Next, we have some more information. We can have some concluding remarks here. Uh, the linear operations are exceptionally important because they are based on the large body of theoretical and practical results that are applicable to the image processing. Now, to talk about nonlinear operations and systems, nonlinear systems are not nearly as well as understood. So, their scope of application is somewhat limited. But sometimes we also observe that there are several nonlinear image processing operations whose performance far exceeds what is achievable by their linear counterparts. So, this completes the linear versus nonlinear operations for digital image processing. Next, we have arithmetic operation. Many a times we go through these basic operations to find the simple results of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So, these are also possible with images. So, arithmetic operations between images are basically the array operations. So, these can also be having with the pixel to pixel relationship that can be given by the four equations. So, the summation or addition what we say, so the resultant image we represent by S of xy, xy being the spatial coordinates. So, for finding this particular summation, we have the addition of the two input image samples that is f of xy and g of xy. The subtraction or the difference sometime we denote, so that is d of xy that is obtained by subtracting g of image uh, g of xy image sample from f of xy. The third one is multiplication. We also sometimes refer with the term product of these two image samples. So, f of xy multiplied with the g of xy. So, that is product that is represented p of xy. Whereas, the division can also be represented f of xy divided by g of xy results into v of xy. So, these addition, subtraction, multiplication and division are done pixel by pixel that is why we call them to be the array operation. So, proceeding further into the arithmetic operations here the dimensions x and y what we have represented these are actually the discrete ones that is why x range from 0 to m minus 1 whereas y range from 0 to n minus 1. So, here capital M capital N is the highest possible value for the two dimensions correspondingly x and y. So, M and N are in another words the rows and column sizes of the image. So, the multiplication of these two dimension we said the resolution for the image. So, here the resultants of the arithmetic operations S, D, P and V should be there are the images of size M and N. So, what the input image size is there, so the same is obtained into the output. Hence, the image arithmetic in this manner involves images of the same size that is the important condition to carry out these arithmetic operations. Next, image addition, we know the addition pixel by pixel is used in the application we are going to see. It is used to reduce the noise content by having addition of set of noisy image. The averaging we can say the addition and dividing the resultant by the number of input images 
we can say the averaging so averaging reduces the noise effect so let us see this particular application this is the technique frequently used for image enhancement in a practice these images must be registered one or we can say aligned one so the corners of the image samples should be matching to each other that we say alignment of the pixels or image registration is also the term in proper way for digital image processing so this is to avoid the introduction of blurring effect and the other artifacts into the output or the resultant image so this is averaging or the application of image addition so in this image uh, in this diagram we have the six image samples the first one is the input image so this is the image of galaxy pair ngc 3314 corrupted by additive gaussian noise so this was a noise affected image we apply the addition as the application to reduce the noise so here right from b to f so b to f so this sequence we have the results of averaging of phi 10 20 numbers 50 numbers and 100 numbers of noisy images so we see here right from this particular image output to this particular image output we have improvement of visualization so this particular application is giving us improvement if you are increasing the addition of number of image samples so this was the application of image addition the arithmetic operation now we have the image subtraction that actually the difference between the two input images so in this diagram we have the first two as the image inputs here and this one is the resultant output image so the first one is actually the infrared image of the washington dc area the second image is obtained by setting to zero the least significant bit of every pixel in the first image so these are the two input samples and finally the difference of the two images scale to the range of 0 to 255 for 8 bit images for clarity purpose is done here so this is the simple application of image subtraction with which we can have more information into the output image as compared to the input ones now next to image subtraction uh, we have another example for the same digital subtraction for the angiography purpose so here we see the four samples here for the same angiography purpose the first one is the mask image the second one is live image the third one is difference between a and b and finally the enhanced difference image so enhanced difference image gives us a better look where we can have proper diagnosis for the angiography patient now the important application of the third arithmetic operation that is image multiplication and the fourth one image division also is a shading correction so for shading correction we have the example so in this shading correction example we have the first image sample the second one that has to be operated overhead to get this particular resultant image so the shaded scm image of the tungsten filament is shown into the part a and it has been magnified approximately 130 times to have better visualization here the shading pattern is shows in shown into the part b that is to be operated here and by the process of multiplication the product of a by b and the reciprocal of b actually gives us the image c here so this is the application of image multiplication for the shading correction another application is in the terms of masking it is also sometimes referred to as region of interest operation so for that purpose we have this simple example this is the first input image for this particular image we have to apply with the region of interest so that is why the mask is there into the part b so these masks have to be uh, confined to these particular regions for this particular application so the resultant is obtained into part c we have the information the first part is digital dental x ray image the second one is region of interest or roi mask for isolating these two teeth with fillings so white corresponds to the one value and the black corresponds to the zero value so mask has only two value so the region of interest operation have 
the mask of only two digital values zeros and one so finally the product of the two is giving us the resultant where we can have concentration on to the intended portion only so this portion is not of importance that is why it has been masked here into the resultant image next mathematical tool we have the set and logical operations set theory you must have learned into the mathematics along with the logical operations so the basic set operations if you talk about these are possible to work with the image also so here we have this particular diagram that uh, represents the set operations in short so if we have the two samples a and b image samples i can say so in a general in set theory the a union b where we uh, take all the components from image sample a as well as image sample b or in set theory we can say set a and set b have to be represented so that is a union b here we have intersection of the two a intersection b those components that are common to both the sets that are represented here so the first part that we are representing two sets of coordinates that is a and b in capital so these are in the two dimensional space here so the b part is showing the union of a and b that we have addressed the third part intersection of a and b that is also discussed now the fourth part represent this particular portion to be the shaded one and it is represented by a to the power c it is complement of set a so those values that are not available with set a are to be all combined from this particular u represents the universe for this particular case so that have to be collected so it represents complement of a so complement of a for the part d and lastly the difference between the a and b so a minus b is to be represented by this particular shaded portion so set basic set operations are also possible for image processing applications also the set operation example can also be given in this particular case so set operation here involves the grayscale images so here the first image this is the original image the second one is obtained as image negative using the set complementation so in the previous slide we have seen the set a and b and in one of the part d we had the complement of a so those samples that are not available with the set if you collect so that is the complement one so that gives us the negative of the original image so these were the two part and finally at the part c we have the union of the first a part and some constant image so this is also possible into the image processing for the grayscale image next we have the second term into this title that is logical operations we know that into the digital world we have the logical operations as like uh, first of all the negations represented by the not uh, and and operation or operation and not operation xor operation so these we have seen into the digital electronics digital circuitry uh, for the logical gates also so that is also possible into the image samples because if you take into consideration only the binary image so binary images have only two logic levels that is either 0 or 1 so for these logical operations we have the truth tables as like for and operation we have the multiplication so 0 into 0 the resultant and operation is equal to 0 0 into 1 is also 0 1 into 0 is also 0 1 into 1 will have the resultant and operation to be 1 in on or operation we have to do the addition of the zeros and ones and into the xor for the like uh, elements we can specify the resultant here so these are also possible with the image samples of binary type here so these are actually the illustrations of the logical operations involving the foreground that is white pixels so black represents the binary zeros and white represents the binary ones here next we have special operations the next mathematical tool in special operations these are performed directly onto the pixels of the given image so here we have the three types or the classification we can say for the special operations the first one is single pixel operation the next one is neighborhood operation and finally we have geometric spatial transformation 
in the earlier case what we have referred to as the image registration that comes into this third type that is geometric spatial transformation so one by one we shall see here so here we have the example here so this is image f this is image g so this is the example of local averaging using the neighborhood processing so here the pixel that has been represented by the spatial coordinates x comma y so s of x y is the neighborhood here the value of the resultant image g pixel x y is obtained by the average value of the pixels into the s x y s of x y here so this is the local averaging by the neighborhood processing here next we have this particular tabulation for various kind of spatial operations the transformations are named as identity scaling rotation operation translation operation shear that is vertical type shear that is of horizontal type so these are the affine matrix that are going to operate onto the image samples the coordinate equations are also mentioned here and these particular diagrams represent the examples into the next slide we shall see the proper example where we have some special operations of rotation kind here so this is the original image so here we have the information a 300 dpi dots per inch image of the letter capital t is represented in part a this particular original image is rotated by 21 degrees using nearest neighbor interpolation method in the digital image fundamentals we have address the interpolation types also this is actually from the multi-rate digital image processing to fill out the vacant places we add certain values so that is nothing but the interpolation their types also have been addressed into that particular video so by using the nearest neighbor interpolation the second image by having the rotation of 21 degrees has been obtained so the assignment of intensity values to the spatially transformed pixels is done here in the third image the image is rotated again by 21 degrees by using the bilinear interpolation and in the last one we have bicubic interpolation we know that the three types of interpolation nearest neighbor bilinear and bicubic so these are showing their particular resultants for the rotation operation that is the spatial operation for image sample another example we can take with this help of particular diagram so here this is the example of image registration this is the original image or we can say this is the reference image now this is the input image which we have to register we have to carry out the image registration of this particular image sample so this is actually geometrically distorted image so after having registration we obtain this particular output though we say these are the very similar one but there are certain differences so the differences between the first and the second one that is the output of image registration is shown into this last part so the difference between a and that of the c is shown here for image registration so these were the special operations after these mathematical tools we have some more mathematical tools like the vector and matrix operation so vector and matrix operation these are also the mathematical operations the particular formulae these operations will be following to give the proper resultants after this we have image transform various kind of image transformations are available transformation provide us the convenience to represent the image data from one domain to another domain because several applications are there that which are sometimes uh, complex to do in one domain but are very very simple into another domain for example the convolution into the time domain is the multiplication into the frequency domain so that time we switch from one domain to another domain with the help of image transforms these are actually going to be addressed into the third chapter the chapter is titled of course the image transform various types of image transform like the two dimensional discrete fourier transform discrete cosine transform hadamard transform slant transform the KL transform we are going to address into that particular chapter so we shall see that in more details into that particular third chapter next mathematical tools we have the last one that is probabilistic methods here so the probabilistic methods also works on to the image sample to give the proper output 
by predicting the things associated with that particular case of image samples so here we have the last example into this video so this is of the image exhibiting first one the low contrast level second one the medium contrast and the third one by high contrast so these we can achieve by having various mathematical tools worked onto the image samples so i can summarize this particular video we have address array versus matrix operations followed by linear versus non linearity into the operations the arithmetic operations of four types we have seen the state and logical operations spatial operations the vector and matrix operations image transform are to be addressed for images and the lastly we have the probabilistic methods i hope you have understood these are the introductory mathematical tools that needs to be very much understood so to begin with this particular subject digital image processing in the next lecture i am going to address the topic classification of digital images so i hope you have understood it well for getting more information on to this subject and the details of digital image processing you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you